but we give this hope for you. This list represents people, and these people need your touch. Father, our goal is to pray people into victory. Victory over sickness, illnesses, Father. Victory over sin, Father. Victory in their lives that they can attribute to God the Most High God. We pray, Father, that you would lay your hand upon them. Let them feel your presence, Father. That the Holy Spirit would dwell in them, with them, all about them, saturate them. I say it often, but I mean it sincerely. Fill us today that we can be vessels fit to pray for the needs that are represented by this prayer list. And thank you, Father, for the victories that are won by us being fervent, diligent prayer warriors for the kingdom and the cross of Christ. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you brought your Bibles this morning? Okay, how many of you brought something to write on this morning? Don't raise your hand. That was rhetorical because I don't want you to feel ashamed because you're not writing anything down. Some of you can write, and I write in my Bible. And some of you say, that's terrible. No, it's not. I've had the same Bible since 1987. This was when I took my first pastorate in 1987. This was the Bible that was presented to me. And I still have it. It even has my, little, my name right here in gold letter, and you can't hardly read it anymore because it's too many times I, I've handled this Bible. 1987. 1987. And here's the cool part, man. I can go to the Christian bookstore and buy a new Bible. And the words are the same because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever right in this. Don't be afraid I remember one minister said, I'm going to stand on the word, praise God. And he laid the Bible down and stood on it. And all the women in the crowd went, oh. I'm telling you, this book contains promises. So hold your Bibles up and we'll do our little Bible dissertation and let it go something like this. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is a work. My heart is saved. I will never be ashamed. I guess because you know I'm here, I think this is when I can only hear me. So I, I shut up and I can hear you. Praise God for that.
faster than a storm blocks any attempt for them to get back to the shore. The waves were so high, even though the father was an exceptional sailor, they could not keep the boat upright, and the three were swept into the ocean as the boat capsized. The old man hesitated for just a moment, making eye contact with two teenagers that were, for the first time since the service began, looking somewhat interested in his story. The age minister continued with his story. Grabbing a rescue one, the father had to make the most excruciating decision of his life. To which of the boys would he throw the end of the rope? He had only seconds to make a decision. The father knew that his son was a Christian, and he also knew that his son's friend was not. The agony of his decision could not be matched by the torrent of the waves. As the father yelled out, I love you, son! He threw the lifeline to his son's friend. By the time the father had pulled the friend back to the capsized boat, his son had disappeared beneath the raging swells into the blackness of the sea. His body was never recovered. Now by this time, the two teenagers were sitting up and taking careful note of everything that was said, anxiously awaiting for the next words to come out of the old minister's mouth. The father, he continued, knew that his son would step into eternity with Jesus, and he would not bear the thought, he just could not bear the thought of his son's friend stepping into eternity without Jesus. Therefore, he sacrificed his son to save his son's friend. How great is the love of God that he would do the same for us! Our Heavenly Father sacrificed His only begotten Son so that we could be saved. The old minister goes on, I urge you to accept His offer to rescue you and take hold of the line that He's throwing out to you in this service. With that, the old man turned and went back and sat in his chair and total silence filled the room. The pastor again slowly walked to the pulpit and delivered a brief sermon with an invitation at the end. However, no one responded to the appeal. But within moments after the service, as it ended, those two boys were right at that old man's side. That was a nice story, politely stated one of the boys, but I don't think it was very realistic for a father to give up his only son in hopes that the other would become a Christian. Well, you've got a point, the old man replied, glancing down at his well-worn Bible. And without a big smile, broadened across his narrow face. He looked up again at the voice and said, it sure wasn't very realistic. But I'm here today to tell you that this story gives me a glimpse of what it must have been like for God to give up his only son for me. You see, I was that father and your pastor was my son's friend. Oh, how much God sacrifices for us. He bankrupt heaven that you could be here this morning. He bankrupt heaven that we could have hope. He bankrupt heaven that we would have a future with him. You say, what does this have to do with veterans? Why did you ask? The battles rage on in our minds. Which way will we go? What will we do? How will we be about the business of our Father, which is in heaven? Family, we're at war. We're at war every day. The battle rage is hot and heavy. Casualties are falling by the wayside. I've got to tell you something. You may disagree 
with me. That's your prerogative. I'm right, you're wrong. We are losing the war. The Christians are losing the war. And every time law is handed down that changes the way that Christians do business, every single time we surrender to the powers that be, we are losing the battles. I know that some of you are thinking, well, Pastor, I've read Revelation chapter 22, and I know who wins. Brothers and sisters, that's not winning. That's not winning. Winning is taking. You know, have you ever had anybody, Don, have you ever had anybody come to you and say, you just won't give it away, you're not going to take it with you anyway. I'm going to tell you something. You can disagree with me, like I said, but I'm lying. There is something we will take with us. Bruce, we're going to take every single soul that we were responsible for winning over the cross of Christ with us. Every single one. Is this Armistice Day tomorrow? Or is it Remembrance Day? Well, in America, we call it Veterans Day, but 53 other countries all do the same thing. Thing on the same day, at the same hour, on November, on 11 11, at 11 a.m., when the ceasefire took place in 1918, we began the process of honoring our war veterans. I want to share a, a few things that I think are important. I obtained this information from a lot of sources. You guys can, can look it up too. But I think it's important that we understand what we're up against. How many of you were around for the Revolutionary War? <laughs> that war was fought from 1775 till 1782. We faced off against the greatest empire of the world at the time. It was the English. America's destiny was being fulfilled. We lost 4,435 Americans to that battle. Then the war, now some of you may be able to relate to this, the War of 1812 where our independence was reassured, reestablished, and we lost 6,765 American lives. The Mexican-American War, which was fought from 1846 to 1848, liberated Texas, California, and other parts of the Southwest. 13,283 Americans died in that conflict, that war. The Civil War ranged from 1861 to 1865. The bloodiest war ever fought on American soil. They don't know the exact count but they believe that it exceeded 600,000 American lives. Can you wrap your mind around that? Doesn't stop there. The Spanish-American War was fought 1899 to 1902. 2,446 Americans died. Then we get into World War I. 116,708 Americans died. World War II began, 1939. We were involved in it until its close in 1945. At its peak, the United States had 8.2 million men and women postured to defend American interests and Americans all over the world. America itself, she lost 
Revelation 17, 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall 
He's the one that matters to me the most. He's the one that matters to me the most. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he said, the ceremony was faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Do you not see that they are making war right now? We're making war! Stop going quietly! Last week when I was arrested, I kicked and screamed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anybody know 
us, it started out just like this, a little, a little thing on the ground there, and then it spiraled, and, and it became this broad path. And all these little munchkins,
Alexander the Great would then sit on his throne, and one by one they would bring the individuals in before the king, the emperor Alexander the Great. And one by one, their charges were brought against him, and the sentence was carried out according to that which Alexander the Great imposed. At one point in walks the sergeant of the guard, and he's carrying the arm of this young man. Couldn't have been more than 18 years old. And he brings him, and they force this young man to his knees, and the young man is weeping. Alexander the Great looks upon the young man with what appeared to be compassion. He said, Sergeant of the Guard, what is the crime against this young man? The sergeant said, Cowardice, sir, we found him in a cave, trembling with fear, as he clearly ran from the battle. Alexander the Great stands up and stepped away from his throne. And he made his way down the steps. He's looking closer and more closely as he approaches into the eyes of this boy who was looking most downcast. I'll tell you, I'll finish the story another time. <laughs> okay, okay. For Miss Al. Alexander the Great knelt.
come up here. Don't sit down. You come right up here. Right up here. Right here at the front, please. Right, all the veterans. If you can't, if you can't walk up here, I'll come back in. It's okay. I'm pretty strong for a little short fat guy. I can hold it off. I feel like I'm missing. I want you to see him. Do you see how tall they stand? Do you see how important these people are? Do you see their stature? Do you, do you see one of them? Which one of you might be ashamed of yourself for what you've done? You know what? Do you notice one thing that's higher than them? There's the cross. They stood for what was important, willing to sacrifice themselves for this. Now, now I'm going to ask you guys to do something for me. Because we're honoring these men and women right here. We're going to stand up. We love them. 